All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. That, of course, symbolizes that we're going to be talking about the band Master this week, who I've been a fan of ever since I first heard them way back in high school. Master might actually be the first death metal band of all time, if not at least one of the first. So they came out of the Chicago scene originally, the main guy behind Master, Mr. Paul Speckman, who's a cool dude that I've actually met IRL. He was in a doom metal band called uh, War Cry, and I'm pretty sure their practices ended up going something like this. Master. Because later on, Mr. Speckman formed the band Master to play sort of a D-beat, but it's a metal version. So what the hell is a D-beat? D-beat is kind of like a syncopated punk drum beat. goes a little something like a... I mean, I don't know, that's not very helpful because you're not getting the fact that the uh, cymbals do a 4-4 thing over all of it. Uh, looks like Wikipedia has a MIDI file of a D-beat. Let's hear what that sounds like. Oh god, I've made a terrible mistake! Whatever. Uh, here's a master song that uses a D-beat rather prominently. So you can hear the uh, syncopated beat going on there. The uh, great thing about D-beats is that they provide an effective matrix for you to diff do a uh, different kind of riffs over. So normally in standard rock and roll drumming, you can't really do too much in the way of narrative songwriting given the confines of your standard rock drum beat. Not so with the D-beat. The uh, original purveyors of the D-beat would probably be punk bands like Discharge, The Varikers, UK Subs, Charge, GBH, A Social, that kind of thing. But they didn't really do too much with the invention outside of just playing fast punk over, which was good stuff. But Master, being a band from a metal background, realized that it was an opportunity for a more epic scale of songwriting. So when I'm talking about Master, really I'm talking about the entire extended Master Complex. What the hell do I mean when I say complex? Well, if you turn to page 198 of Roger Tory Peterson's Field Guide to the Eastern Birds of North America, you will take note of something called the Epidominax Complex. So basically this is a bunch of uh, flycatchers that look rather similar and are probably all evolutionary, very closely related, but they're slightly different to the point where they can be considered different species. Similarly, Mr. Mr. Speckman started out this band Master at the same time he ran another band called Death Strike. It sounded a lot like Master. They ended up folding. He brought Death Strike's songs back into Master. He also had a band called Funeral Bitch that sounded a little bit like Master and he ended up bringing Funeral Bitch songs into Master. Later on he had a band called Abomination that were a little bit more epic in songwriting scope than Master but you could tell that it was the same people writing the music. And he had something called Speckman Project which was basically when they were on New Clear Blast, I think. Uh, Marcus Steger gave them money to give to Scott Burns to re-record their debut album to make it sound a little bit more trendy, and they didn't end up liking how it sounded, but they didn't want to waste the money they spent on the recording, so they ended up releasing that alternate recording under a different band name. So the Master Complex we are left with. So Master influenced a whole bunch of different bands. We have Morbid Angel was heavily influenced by them, Deicide, Napalm Death have actually covered Master several times and in fact the initial incarnation of Napalm Death was master influence but also later on Napalm Death's 
went under a massive lineup readjustment and they brought in one of the guys from Terrorizer, which is another very master influenced band and to the point where I heard master before I heard Terrorizer and because of that, I don't even think Terrorizer that great. They're just taking master riffs and playing them a little bit faster. They're not very original. In fact, out of all the bands that gave up members to form the new version of Napalm Death in the uh, late 80s, I think that Terrorizer is the worst. Personally, I prefer uh, Righteous Pigs and Unseen Terror. But perhaps the extended phylogenetic tree of Napalm Death is beyond the scope. Of this podcast what in god's holy name are you blathering about so mr speckman in the wake of all that has had a little bit of beef with some of the bands that took influence from him so we got the case of the guy in cynic paul masvidal playing lead guitar on a master album later on a fan goes to a record signing for uh, mr masvidal brings said master album he's like i don't know what is this i don't know what this is or like john tardy from obituary later on saying he doesn't remember doing vocal for Master on their second album even though he definitely did. It's one of the most memorable parts of that album. Or uh, Pete Sandoval of uh, Morbid Angel and Terrorizer Frame downplaying the influence that Master had on them. And as much as I love Morbid Angel in this case I'm going to have to come down firmly on the side of Mr. Paul Speckman because here's what Master sounded like in 1985. <laughs> Here's what they sound like nowadays. Conversely, Morbid Angel sounded like this at their artistic peak. Nowadays, Morbid Angel sounds more like this. Oh my god! Fucking My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. So how was Master able to remain relevant while Morbid Angel just does stupid shit like that nowadays? Well, Master's songwriting has a degree of elasticity to it in that You can always tell that it's Paul Speckman writing everything, but he can move between styles without bending or breaking the uh, sound that they're going for too much. They can even do this with the same song on different albums. So here's one version of the song Pay to Die. Nice intro riff. D beat in full effect. Obviously, that's a death metal classic. Most people should be aware of that song. Later on, they redid it for that Speckman Project album I mentioned earlier, and it came out sounding like this. Same intro riff, way different drumming style. This is Arian Nikias on drums. He's one of the uh, underrated death metal drummers in the scene. So look, they've changed that riff and made it a lot more thrashy. That's what I mean when I say their style has a degree of elasticity to it. It's still clearly the same song, but they can do it in different ways without losing their identity as a band. Earlier on, I mentioned that Master's major innovation was to take the kind of D-beat matrix and use it to create rather epic songs. So for an example of that, let's go back to their second album. So remember this riff. This will be important later in their uh, songwriting process. But now, it's time for Bible study with the one and only 
Paul Speckman. What do I mean by that? Hmm. Let's find out. Very heavy. Watch this. Of the pit. So, he says pit goes into a mosh pit riff. Makes perfect sense. To me, at least. There's some more great drumming from Arian Nikias. Good riff, too. Here comes the vocals. Okay, we're going back to Sunday school now. It's also death metal school as he schools you in how to write proper metal without being a faggot. Listen to the hatred in that, man. That's pretty black metal. Or death metal. Death! Great riff right there. I moshed pretty hard when they played this one. I saw them live, I'm a cool dude. So, coming up, we're gonna get to the recapitulation of that part that I said to pay attention to earlier. Remember that intro riff? Brought it back, yeah! But it's different. They're playing it faster, a little bit different. And the vocals follow the cadence of that riff perfectly. Pretty sure Napalm Death ripped this riff off at some point. So you can see there how they take what would normally be very primitive music, but do some very epic in scope things with it. Sorry Shaddy, I'm not doing the scope joke again, but it looks like we have time to listen to a little bit of one more song. This one's off their third one, so check this shit out. So for this one, Paul Speckman yelled at the producer, Give us fucking bass! And they got it. Check out that bass sound. A lot of people don't like this album for some reason. Even Paul Speckman doesn't like it, but I like it. Nice chorus riff. Also, the vocals are very hateful again. So we're coming up on a pretty interesting counterpoint riff. Check this out. They took the front end of the last riff, but put on a little bit of a scale at the end to move the song along. Clever little trick. And then check this shit out. This is nuts. Oh, sorry. No, not yet. They're going to do this part one more time. Then we're going to get to the heavy shit. It's going to get really heavy, I promise. Here it comes. Slow that shit down. Change it up. Sick riff. Look at the stuff the bass is doing, man. So yeah, listen to Master. I don't know what else to tell you guys. Uh, what album to start with? Their uh, 2016 album was actually really good. I personally like their first album a lot, their third one, the second one, uh, like all the new ones. They're all really good, so any Master album is probably good to start with. They do wacky stuff like cover Johnny Cash and Thin Lizzy. So they're a lot of fun. They're great live if you get a chance to see them, go for it. I'll see you guys next week. What are you doing on the computer? Go outside, so beautiful! Yeah!